Hello, we're auditioning for the new villains in the new Spider-Man movie. I'm Doc Ock. I'm gonna get you. And I'm Doc Croc. Ooh. Welcome to Kid Life. Sorry. Let's pray. Hey boys and girls, it's time to pray. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes with me. And let's pray together, okay? Lord, I thank you for all my friends that are watching here at Kid Life today, God. I pray right now that they have an absolute great time learning all about you, God. Let us have fun. Let us know that you are here with us today, God. And God, we love you so much and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Hi, it's me, India. Welcome back to our series, Don't Worry About It. We've already learned that God doesn't want us to be anxious or worried. That's not his plan for our lives. But have you ever wondered why? I mean, why doesn't God want us to worry? Is it because worry is a sin? Or maybe it's because worry makes us sad? Could it be that worry makes us sick? The truth is, the reason why God doesn't want us to worry is because worry doesn't work. It's true. Jesus taught us that worrying doesn't even work. I mean, think about it. Has worrying about a test ever got you a better grade? No. Has worrying and freaking out about being popular ever made people like you more? Of course not. Worrying doesn't work. It doesn't do anybody any good. So instead of freaking out about stuff, don't worry about it. Today in your lesson, you're gonna learn some pretty cool things Jesus taught about the subject of worry. I want you to pay close attention. This could save your life someday. I can't wait for you to learn how worrying doesn't work. Until next time, I'm India reminding you, don't worry about it. See ya. What you gotta know? Hey kids, what time is it?
It's now time to praise the Lord. Wait, I thought we were gonna stop that. Cause we're the villains. Oh, I guess we should stop the worship, huh? We gotta sell this audition. I know, I know, I'm working on it. Okay, okay. I can't really see anything. I know you can't see anything. All right, we're going to stop the worship. How's that? Yeah, that'll sell it. We'll get the parts. Yeah, definitely. This is a, this is a sell. It's and then we'll get better costumes when they hire us. Much better.
your foe Still your love fought for me And you have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth You paid it all for me And you have been so, so kind And you won't climb up coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me And so I'm a little bit hard of hearing, but I'm here to teach you today's power verse. Today's power verse says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6. Well, that was a wonderful power verse, wasn't it? I'll tell you what I need you to do. I need you to help me say it. So I want you to stand up. There you go, stand up. And you're going to say it with me loud. Remember, I'm hard of hearing. Say it with me loud so we can get my loud meter all the way up to 10. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6. Oh, that was pretty good. It was pretty good, but I still can't hear you. <laughs> get it? I want you to do it again, and this time we're going to get the lotto meter all the way to 10. Say it loud. Here we go. One, two, three. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6. Well, good job on the power verse. You may have a seat. Well, I've got to go babysit my nephew, Perry. He's 36, but he still can't make a bowl of cereal. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? Well, until next time, I can't hear you, but I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Today our Bible story comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Jesus was teaching many people, as he often did. While he was teaching, he began to talk about the subject we are learning in this series, worry. Jesus told the crowd, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Wait, 
What did Jesus say? Don't worry about everyday life? Do you think Jesus realized just how easy it is for us to worry? We tend to worry about a lot of things. Did Jesus understand how difficult it is to not worry? Of course he did. After all, he was fully human as well as being fully God. But Jesus went on to explain why it is pointless to worry. Jesus said, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single day to your life? Jesus was making the same point we're learning our lesson today. Worry doesn't work. Jesus went on to say, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the flowers of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Wow, Jesus made such a good point. God takes care of the birds and the flowers. Birds and flowers don't worry. They don't panic. They just trust God to take care of them. That's exactly what we should do. Besides, worry doesn't work. As Jesus said so perfectly, can worrying add one day to your life? Jesus knew how important it is for us to trust God with our everyday problems. God cares about us much more than he does the flowers or the birds. That's why we can trust him to take care of us when we face difficulty. In our lesson today, we're going to learn that worry doesn't work. There's a much better plan. Pay attention. This lesson could really make a big difference in your life. Hey, boys and girls, here's a statement to start off today's sermon, which may not be that encouraging at all, really. Life is hard. I know, what a way to start that out. There's so many things to do, so many people to please, and so many things that we need. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And here's the thing, we deal with worry all the time at, at school and at home. We deal with so many things. And what happens when we get worried? Sometimes we get agitated, we get angry, we get, we complain more. We do so many things that are negative and we think negative and we start getting that stinking thinking that we always talk about. And it just, it just gets so negative if we allow worry to just start creeping in to our lives. Here's the thing, Jesus told us don't worry about everyday life. And I know what you're saying. Jesus, what do you mean don't worry? That's it, don't worry? Just. It's so easy to say, don't worry, but how is it to actually not worry? Especially about everyday life. Sure, there's little small minuscule things that we don't have to worry about and we shouldn't worry about, but there's other things that we do worry about and we get so sidetracked and caught off guard and we, and we don't know what to do and we worry. And here Jesus says, don't worry about everyday life. Jesus doesn't want you to worry. In fact, here's the thing, you don't have to worry. Here's our first point. God cares about every detail of your life. Often we worry because we forget that God is in control. God is in control. He pays attention to and cares about every detail of your life. He knows how tall you are, how many teeth you have in your mouth, how many hairs you have on your head. He knows about all of that. He knows every single detail. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew 10 and 30 that the very hairs on your head are all numbered. That means that God knows exactly how many hairs are on your head and everything else in between. How many bones you have, you lost, you're, you broke, you mended and all. He knows it all. He knows every detail. He pays so much attention to you. That is good to know. As a matter of fact, it's more than good. It's great to know that God pays attention to so much in our lives. That minuscule detail of knowing how many ha hairs are on our head, he pays attention to us. Isn't that awesome? Here's another thing. Did you know that God thinks about you all the time? All the time he thinks about you. All the time he cares about you. All the time he is wondering how you are doing, how you are feeling, how you are thinking. He cares for you so much, boys and girls. I'd never forget that. If there's anything today that you don't get, I want you to get that, is that he cares about you so 
much. I want you to think about a, a, a jar with sand in it. Now, could you imagine counting all of the sand in that jar? You couldn't. Some specks are big, other specks are so small, you cannot see them hardly. But here's the thing, God knows how many specks of sand are in that jar. Crazy, I know, right? We wouldn't know, because it's hard to count that many, but God knows. That's how much detail he pays attention to you about. He cares so much for you. He wants nothing but the best for you. And he loves you so much that he just even knows the minuscule small amounts about you. The stuff that people overlook, the stuff that people don't even look at. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares about you. Psalms 139, 17 through 18 says this. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. Like, whoa, God has more thoughts about you than there are grains of sand in the whole entire world. He cares about you. He loves you. Even the smallest stuff you think that he doesn't know, he knows. He asks how much he thinks about you. I want you to think about that for, for just a moment. Before we go any further into this message, actually, I think I want to pray for you. Before we go any further into this message, can we stop and pray real quick? Let's stop and pray. Bow your head and close your eyes with me. We're going to finish this message. Just let me pray for you real quick. I want to pray for those of you that are watching right now that feel like you're insignificant. You feel like you're small. You're like some of those specks of sand that you can't see but God can see. So I'm gonna pray for you. Bow your head and close your eyes with me real fast. Lord, I thank you for each person that's watching. God, we thank you so much that you love us down to the very last detail, to the stuff that's big and to the stuff that is so small that you need a telescope or a microscope to see. God, we thank you that you pay so much attention to us. Even in moments when we feel like we're alone, Remind us of that. In moments we feel like things are out of control, remind us that you were there and you got it all, even right down to the finest detail. We thank you, God, and we love you so much. And everybody said, amen. Let me finish this message. Here's the thing. God knows every detail of your life. He's in control. He knows when you are sick, he knows when someone's picking on you at school. He knows when you move to a new school and you need to make new friends. He knows when your parents are going through a tough time. And here's the thing, Jesus said it, and this is the part where we, we, we gotta hone in on this now. He says, you don't need to worry. God knows it all. Even the stuff you haven't told anybody, God knows it all. He's in control. Another reason why you don't need to worry is worrying doesn't work. It doesn't. I wish I could change that for you, but it doesn't. It does not. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 27, can all your worries add a single day to your life? In other words, does worrying really ever change anything? It never helps the situation. You can sit there and twiddle your thumbs and worry and panic, and you can see that look in your face, you go, well, I don't know what to do. How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna handle this? And you twiddle your thumbs and your heart beats, and the question is, is it adding a day to your life? As a matter of fact, it just might be taking a day from your life. Because you're, you're putting your body through that worry that you don't need to do. You don't need to worry. Because here's the thing, it produces even more worry. So, why worry? Why freak out? After all, if we really believe that God is in control and we really do trust him, then there is no need to worry. 
question for you. Does God want us to worry or trust in him? I'll wait. If you said worry, what are you doing? Come on now. Come on. You know the answer is it's trust in him. God wants us to trust in him. Here's another question though. Can we trust God and worry at the same time? Some people think we can. We can do that. We say, I do trust God, but I just worry a lot. I've been there before. Anybody else? Anybody else? That you can trust God, but at the same time, you're worrying. God, I believe you can do this, but at the same time, I'm still panicking. Here's the thing. Our hearts cannot be fully trusting and worrying at the same time. You can trust God, but you can't worry at the same time. Imagine that tug of war. Imagine what's happening in your body. And this, your body would be in circles, dizzy. You'd be nauseous because your body keeps going left and right. I trust God, but I worry. I'm worrying, but I do trust God. And you're like, what do, well, what do I do? What do I do? God wants us to trust in him whenever we are tempted to worry because get this, he cares for us. He cares for us. He is in control and knows about everything that has happened in the past, everything that's happening now in the present, and everything that will happen in the future. He knows your yesterday, he knows your today, and he knows your tomorrow. He knows every single detail about you. He knows it. God is more than worthy of our full trust. So here's my last point. When you are tempted to worry, don't panic. Pray. Pray. Worry doesn't work. So stop worrying. Stop panicking. Stop freaking out. Stop going in circles and pacing and, and biting your nails and wondering if so and where there and all that stuff. Trust God. Do what the Bible tells us to do in Philippians chapter four, verse six. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Since worrying doesn't work, choose to do the one thing that does, and that's pray. So let's do that. We already did it earlier in our message, but let's do it again. Let's pray instead of worrying. I don't know what you're worried about, I don't know if you're wondering about things. Some new things are coming your way. Some old things are happening. I don't know what it, whatever it is. I want you to stop worrying and instead pray. So let's do that. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this message today. God, we worry a lot sometimes. We panic. It's inevitable, it happens, it's part of life. But you said, don't worry about everyday life. You said it so easily too, yet some of us find it hard to do that. So God, can you help us this week? Can you help us this week not to worry? not to panic, but to turn to you. In moments where it feels like we can't do anything, in moments we think that it's too small of a problem and that we don't really matter. But God, we know that we do matter and that you're watching over us all the time from the big things to the little things. Help us get rid of worry. God, we love you so much and we thank you. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to tell you about how you can know God. You see, God created you to know him and have a relationship with him. I'm going to pretend that these Lego people are God and us. 
even though we know God's not a Lego person or us. Anyways, God created us to know him and to have a relationship with him. He created us in his image and he loves us so much. Then something bad happened, you see. Man sinned against God. He made a bad choice. And when he did, sin entered the world. <sighs> I'm sin. Sin is any bad choice that we make. And the Bible says that we have all sinned. We've all done something wrong and that it separates us from God. <laughs> and there's nothing we can do to get to God on our own. We cannot be good enough to get to God. No, you can't get to God. But you see, God did not want it that way. So he made a way that we could know him. He sent his son Jesus into the world as a baby and he grew up to be a man and he lived a perfect life. But he died an awful death on the cross for us, for our sins. But he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead three days later. And when he did that, he defeated sin. Ah! And the Bible says that if we believe that and receive what Jesus did by asking God to forgive our sins and making Jesus our Lord and Savior, that, you know what happens? Our sins are forgiven, our hearts are washed clean, ah! and God comes and puts his spirit in us and makes us his children. And we're reunited with him through Jesus. Now, I'm gonna give you a chance to pray with me to receive what Jesus did on the cross so you can know God. Will you bow your heads with me and repeat after me? God, I believe in you. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe that he lived a perfect life and died an awful death on the cross and then rose from the dead. Please forgive me of all the bad things I've done. Wash my heart clean and make me alive on the inside. Your child. I want to know you, God. Teach me to know you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Awesome. Okay, all right, stand right over here. Stand right here and, and, and act like you're gonna do the goodbye. Okay, right there and I'll come in. All right, and action. Goodbye and oh, yeah! I hope you're not. I'm Amazon Boo Noodle Man and I'm here to stop you, Doc Croc. Oh, <laughs> I hit you. <laughs> and another one. I get you. Well, until next time. Uh, mm. Matt, are you okay? Matt, oh boy. Oh, oh geez. Matt, Matt, come on. Good Lord, man. You've got to stop eating Chick-fil-A. I quit. Wait, you can't I'm quit. for show business. We have an audition. See you next time. Matt, come back. Matt. Matt.